Hi, I'm just going to do another Photoshop tutorial. Um, someone's requested a um, grayscale tutorial, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, so just loading up Photoshop, uh, I'm just going to drag in a sketch. And again, I'm going to whack on this is all by the mouse. <coughs> whack on was in transit, so hopefully having it in a few days. Uh, so this is the sketch. Uh, you can probably see it's on A4 piece of paper. Um, but I thought it's a nice sketch, so what I'll do, I'll, um, I'm going to render this one up. Now, I don't really want the rest of it, so what I'm going to do, oh, and ignore the noise in the background, I'm just watching live from space at the minute, so I'd rather not have it on mute. Anyway, um, what you can do. Oh, excuse iTunes, I'm importing music. Um, just turn it off. Okay, bear with me. Sorry about that. Right, so what I've done here, just loaded in, chucked it in. I'm going to do it again, like on the previous tutorial. Command N, set up a new piece. I'm happy with that. Then I'm going to rotate the canvas because I couldn't be bothered to type it in the right way. Then. Anyway. And currently, um, just so it's, you by default you'd be on whatever tools are by default, now I'm going to press M, which brings up the marquee tool, which is this one here, marquee tool. And I'm just going to select that area. Now whilst that is highlighted, I'm going to press Command C for copy. I'm just going to go into the new file. I'm going to Command V, paste. Um, and because there's only one layer, it just copies what whatever's on that layer you're on. Obviously, if you've got more than one layer, you have to be on the right layer. Um, okay, so let's just zoom in. And Okay, right, I've pressed command T, uh, I'm going to hold shift and I'm just going to scale that up. And. <coughs> and. I'm going to give that a bit of an angle as well. Uh, again, pan thing does my head in on Photoshop. Okay. So again, like in the previous tutorial, if I wanted to keep the sketch, um, which I will do actually, I'll do a sketchy grayscale, because someone just requested grayscale, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to try something else just to show you something. Um, if you press Command and U, you get hue and saturation come up, um, which is good for changing the colour of things. So if I just move the slider, you'll notice the background changes colour. And this, this is obviously affected by what was in the layer, um, which is irrelevant anyway. And you can take the saturation right out of it. So it just takes all the colour out of it. And then you can do all the lightness or go fully dark. Um, but what we want to do, you can do that for individual colours as well. But there's a couple of uh, defaults you can go with. Or you can go by colour. So <coughs> if you've got a, you know, a red image, it's easy to do. I'm going to cancel that anyway. That's just to show you what hue saturation is and that is under image adjustments hue saturation now there's a shortcut for uh, desaturate which is here command shift and u which i use quite a lot because it basically makes everything black and white so command shift and u and that's just taken all the color out it's the same thing as hue saturation but it just does it for you as the as a shortcut sort of thing and then what I'm going to do now I'm going to do 
colour range. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got some kind of cough going on. And I'm going to pick the black. And then I'm going to see where that gets me. And you can see the preview adjusts. So you can start to see, oh, it's picking up the background here now. I don't really want that. So that tends to kick in at around. 125 ish. I'll go with that. But I'm going to lose quite a lot of that, so it's not really a good idea. Uh, I'll do that again. I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do it the other way around. I'm going to pick the, the white and I want to retain some lines, the contours and the bonnet and stuff like that and that'll do <coughs> and then what I'm going to do, rather than deleting that like I did before whilst that's selected I'm going to use a layer mask which is this icon down here again and it's still the, the other way, so I'm going to invert the layer mask, so command I. And then on this layer mask as well, I'm going to use a brush. Uh, quite soft, it doesn't need to be too hard, but it's not going to be super soft. I'm going to use a black, so it'll hide whatever I paint. And I'm just going to paint out the crap that I don't want. And basically, I'm just getting rid of all the rubbish that I don't actually want. I'm changing my brush by the um, closed brackets and open brackets or parentheses if you're a coder. Um, so. And at the minute my opacity is really low, so no wonder it's taking forever to do that. That's better. I'm only doing this really roughly as well, because by the time it's really rendered, you won't really notice all this. It just means it's cleaner to start with. I'm actually going to use a really soft brush now. Quite big, so I'll just take out all the fuzzy grainy stuff. It's a bit weird, but it's a photo of a sketch anyway, so. <coughs> Alright, I'm going to um, tweak the perspective of this as well. So I'm going to drag this side of the card down using this side and make it slightly bigger as well. Just because this is the foreground as well, it's pinching quite a lot here, but it's quite a warped fish eye sort of lens, is what they've become to know as. I wonder if this back end up a bit as well. Just so that this is almost in the centre of the page. So the headlight is. <coughs> Is the, the point at which I want to aim to have your eye drawn to. Hence, where you can see in the sketch that that's you know, heavily drawn compared to the rest of the car. Um, now, for a grey scale, I'm going to leave the sketch on top, but I'm going to tone the opacity down just so that when I render underneath it, I can see it. 
and I'm also going to make that layer and multiply. <coughs> so anything white will just disappear. And a new layer underneath, I'm basically going to get a nice big. Actually, I'm going to do a background on here with a gradient tool. So I'll do a new layer for the, the gradient, and under my paint bucket, oh, G, I'll get the gradient tool. And then this is the gradient tool. <coughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a few colours in here. And I'm going to have it kind of white out, I think. I'll try it white out and just see what it looks like. Um, actually, failing that. Because I'll, I'll, actually, I'll show you just for the sake of showing you. If I do it that way, and on here, with a gradient tool, you'll get a little crosshairs, and you drag in a certain direction. So if I drag in this direction, the gradient goes that way. If I drag in this direction, it'll go that way. So it's like perpendicular to the way you drag, and then the distance you drag also affects it. And you can change the actual thing by tweaking these so if I get rid of that for example it makes it softer so if I press OK do that again <coughs> but uh, you know it's not great it's not ideal so what you can do is another thing is you can do a new layer and on that layer there's this little uh, circle that's got half white and half transparent click on that it gives you a list uh, if you click on the gradient <coughs> it's the same thing but it's linked to the layer then so rather than doing it on a layer and that's it it's done it's and you have to kind of undo Z sort of thing um, with this tool you can change it at any time so it com comes back to the same thing where you go okay I want to add a few colors I want to uh, keep that opacity quite low or something or change it past the under so I'm gonna make that 100% then in the middle, I'm going to make it slightly darker, maybe. And that one I'm just going to delete, so I want like one right in the middle. Then I can change the effect that has to where it suits what I want. <coughs> I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it a little bit darker. And the beauty of this is, uh, I can also change the angle of it as well, if I really want. Uh, which I will actually, I'll do it to suit the, actually no, I'll leave it 90 degrees. You can change the scale. So I'm going to leave it around 100% percent on you can also do a radial, an angle, reflected or diamond. Um, and I'll leave it on linear for now. And then that's fine with me. So I'm going to click OK on that. And then you'll notice this is what's happened to your layer. But if you ever double click on this, it'll come back to that tool. So then you think, OK, oh, I'm going to change that colour to red. Or I'm going to change it to whatever, and it just means that you can um, always tweak it and change it afterwards. Whereas if I painted that on a layer, I'd have to delete that layer and do another one. So this makes it easier to go backwards and change things. So these things like that, this is quite good. So if I think, okay, that's going to be my um, my base layer, I'm going to name that as base, just for my own reference, and then I'm going to just delete the background layer. Okay, so that's my base layer, sketches on top, and then I'm going to render in between. So on this layer now, I'm going to just get a brush, and I'm going to do grey. I'm going to pick a grey and I'm going to add it to my swatches like previously. And I don't want something too dark and I don't want something too light. 
so and I want something that's almost like a a metallic -y, grey gummetly so I want to pick up a bit of the blue for this particular render okay now what I'm going to do so I don't lose that I'm going to add that to swatches and it will appear at the end next to that red and I'm just gonna because I want my focal point to be in the middle I don't care about what, what happens at the end so I want it to fade out anyway and the way I, I like to think about it is like depth of field on a, a photo on a camera or something so I want all this to be in focus and really crisp and really sharp and I want all that to fade out and just be what it is um, so I literally just airbrush that and I know it's not great because um, I'm using a mouse, so and then what I'm going to do, rather than sh for the sake of this tutorial, rather than pathing everything out, I'm going to try and do it all with the mouse uh, freehand because it's just quicker. Um, so what I'm going to do is that's my base focal point. I'm just going to erase. So I've pressed E on the keyboard to bring up my erase tool. You'll notice the tool changes in the corner. I'm going to just erase some of this up here. I have to build that layer in the first mess, that might help. Path out the window first, I think. Because if I do that, you'll begin to see a bit more of a contrast as to um, what's between the metal and the glass. So, quickly just path that in. So it's the same process before, I've just used a pen tool, now I'm going to use a convert point tool. And I'm just going to pull these out initially. Now here, like I explained in the last tutorial, I don't want that to be in curvature because it's gone to a point, so I'm going to pull this, pull this one separately. And then I'm going to change the direction of that one, pull that in. Um, which is the one good thing about curve point tool, but these two I'm going to keep curvature. This one, I'm going to do non curvature, so I'm going to pull that out. These two again. I don't want curvature on this one, so I'm going to pull this one to suit the actual A pillar. And then I'm going to pull that up, show a bit of curvature in the glass. And again, same with this one, because it's a point. I don't need that to be in curvature, so. I'm going to press A on the keyboard and then I'm going to hold Command or Control, press left click on mouse. So it's gone from black arrow, which is the selection arrow, to the uh, white arrow, which is also here. Direct selection tool is what I'm on at a minute. Oh, and actually, I need to go back to the convert point tool. And just pull them out and then go back to my direct selection tool. And I'm literally going to do as quickly as I can. Rage against the machine next on four. Christian Bale and Sam Worthington in Terminator Salvation. Because I'm intending on doing an actual rendering in this video, I'm taking a bit more care about these than what I did before. Uh, whilst I'm on these paths, actually, I'm going to path out a lot of the car purely because it makes life easier with the mouse. I know I said it five minutes ago I wasn't going to do that, but I've changed my mind. I should probably get the boy there. So I'm going to do two paths for the actual grill. I'm 
Um, no, because to show you this now, you don't see the underside of the intake. See, there's a massive lip here. So you don't see it. in reality. It's it's around here somewhere where the grill starts and comes back out. <coughs> so to achieve that in here, I'm gonna um do a path as normal, but I'm gonna take the path out of that one and then back in, and then with the nail on the cur curve point tool, I'm gonna just path this one out as normal. And so again, the same process, just keep going around. Then back on the direct selection tool and just tweak it all out, make sure it's right. Yeah, I'm not really happy with this corner. That's better. <coughs> so on this line now to just kind of disappear out of here. And same with this side. Um all will become clear in a minute. If you've not already guessed how you do it. But you probably have. Because it's kind of it's common sense really. So what I'm going to do, with, uh, actually, I'll, I'll show you that in a minute, I'll puff out the headlight as well first, and all these lines. So bear with me a moment. Shapes might look a bit weird to you at the minute when I'm just blocking these in. But it'll all make sense in the few, in the end. So at the bottom of this sill and the front lip of the car there's a bit of sculpture, there's quite high ground clearance. I'm going to take that right off the edge of the page. Again, use the point tool, curve point tool. I'm just going to pull all these out. Now, here, that's dead straight. Now, right, I could play around with these, pull these out, and try and get the curvature in right. Um, but a good way of doing it is on the direct selection tool, if you right click in somewhere in the middle of those points, add anchor point, and it'll add a dot there. You can also right click and delete anchor point. So add anchor point, and then that's evenly spaced I can just add a bit of curvature by pulling that which I do all the time because it's so much easier than trying to second guess it and you pull one side you've got to pull the other side to match it's easier to have one in the middle so a longer curve and you'll notice I've done it on the windscreen one in the middle and you don't have to worry about having to second guess it you can just evenly pull that and you get a nice even, even curve that's quite important. Um, so again, I'm just going to 
same process again. It's so repetitive. That's just what I don't really like about Photoshop. It's just so repetitive. <coughs> Whereas things like Sketchbook and Painter are just so much more free than Photoshop, but Photoshop's what the industry demands, so so be it. And if you are fortunate enough to have a whack on and you use Photoshop to draw and then you use Sketchbook to draw you will notice a massive difference in the way that it feels in terms of um, strokes and the brushes and the way it feels and, and the way it lays down paint uh, the level, levels of pressure sensitivity in sketchbook is so much better than Photoshop and I can get a better gradient as in an airbrushed feel in F sketchbook than I can in Photoshop because of the way sketchbook actually calculates the way it works I don't I don't know the algorithm like it does but this Photoshop's amazing for a lot of things, but for, for sketching, it's got nothing on Sketchbook Pro or Painter for that matter. Because they're designed by artists for artists as opposed to photography based editing software that's been used for something it was really intended for in the first place. Um, that's my gripe about Photoshop, over. Right, you'll notice this path is trying badly to follow the line of that crease, that eyebrow above the actual headline. And what I'm doing is it's this path is purely to get the drop shadow underneath that actual eyebrow. Um, so all I want to do is get an airbrush and I'll airbrush it and then I'll erase it afterwards. So I just want plenty of room to get plenty of tone in there. <coughs> Hence why it's just, this is the line that matters, whatever this is, doesn't really matter. Um, God, that looks terrible down there. You can see why this is so tedious. It's nitpicking over lines. But it's one of those, like, if you path out everything precisely and nicely, you'll notice when it comes to actually rendering, the rendering, take, the rendering itself takes no time at all. It's the tedious things like getting everything right that takes forever i.e. doing this but it's worth it in the long run Again, just gonna add an anchor point. You know, easier to do it that way. Rather than having to try and move the anchor points. And then I'm also gonna do the crease on the shoulder, which, funnily enough, 
it, although it disappears here, it runs through into the eyebrow. So there's a, there's a visual link from the shoulder to the uh, headlight into the grill, um, which is quite important. And then I'm just going to eyeball that around there. And again, it's going to be a massive fall off. But what I'm concerned about with this one is predominantly how that interacts with that crease into the actual wheel arch. I'm going to add an anchor point in the middle just so it's easy to move that. Tweak that a little bit. And that one path will allow me to do the top edge and the side. <coughs> and then the next one, and I think the last one now, um, is wheel arches, these curves here. So I'm going to do those on a, on a new path, just so it's out of the way. So I'm going to turn it into the black arrow by pressing command or just going on path selection tool. Command T and I'm going to just rotate that so it's in the right perspective. So this sketch wasn't too far off. Yeah, it wasn't too far. All right. Boat there would be alright. So asking me to make sure it's an actual path, which is fine. I'm going to save the path layer. I'm going to hold Alt. I'm going to drag that three times. Uh, I'll actually probably do more than that. This one is to do. I'm going to hold Shift in the corner and just scale it proportionally. And I'm going to move it so it hits the top of this. And then I'm just going to pull these sides out so it kind of sits right on that crease. So this one is going to be the rim and this is going to be the wheel arch. So I'm just going to scale that out. And then with that done, I'm just going to do a save just so it doesn't die on me. Good as Photoshop's buggy as hell. <coughs> right. So I'm going to select the wheel arch one first. And then I'm going to get a black, get a nice airbrush. So what I've done there? Just create the shadow that goes behind the wheel, but I'm just going to raise the bottom off, soften that out. And now, now I've pathed all that and I've got that shadow in, I'm going to start to add shadows first. <coughs> so, new layer. And then I'm going to start selecting all my paths. And that one, that one. I'm going to do windows first. Because they're black. And they're easy. Shift select, multiple doing all at the same time. And I'll do this grill actually. All at the same time on the same layer. No point making extra layers for no, no reason. Um, and I've selected a layer that I didn't want. Which is annoying. Just delete that. So then 
I'm actually going to select this layer first. Uh, not layer, path, sorry. I'm going to command shift and I to invert the path. <coughs> and then I'm just going to use the erase tool. And just erase what I don't want. You can press delete if you want. Um, so as I was trying to explain earlier, that kind of gives me the grill. And on the same layer, I'm not changing layer, still on the same layer. And I'm going to do the windscreens. I don't tend to do them completely black as well. I want to leave a little bit of transparency to show that there's light shining through the windscreen. And you can see through the side window on the other side. And that is just as simple and as effective as just doing a nice airbrush like that. Just again, this one. I'm going to darken this corner, but you kind of getting in this area here light shining through the rear window but then here it's going to be dark because you're going to have seats and all that in the way but you could go into natural drawing out some seats and stuff but I'm not going to do that um, no I'm going to underneath that the layer I've just done I'm going to do this area of the grill um, so do a new layer again. So number five is in between four and three. I'm gonna get the black and just do just the top. So I'm just getting that nice shadow. I'm gonna size it out a bit so it's a bit bigger. But then what I'll do turn the opacity down to about eighty five percent smart. Like And then what I'll do, I'll get an eraser, and I'll just erase the middle bit. And then on a new layer again, I'm going to get that same path. And then I'm going to do a white. And all that's doing there is that's where it's catching light um, ex excuse the screaming in the background if you can hear that that's Terminator Salvation it's just on channel 4 um, ok actually much of the day is on I didn't drink the tea um, Now I'm going to do the, the eyebrow. So I'm going to get black. I just press B then to go to my brush tool. And the same process as the grub. Only this time, I'm just going to freehand all this down here. I'm just going to erase all that. That I don't want, which is fine. <coughs> then on top of that, I'm gonna get a brilliant white for this, which is the headlight. Now, if you notice over here, you can always have two colors selected, um, regardless of what's in your swatches. Now, if I press X, you'll notice the colors selected switches so the top one you see is the top one you're selected on which is black if i press x goes to white nice little shortcut i use all the time okay that is on a separate layer yeah um i want that to be really crisp at the minute the sketch is still on the top of everything at the minute so ignore it at the minute okay so you can see where it's actually starting to come from now and albeit it takes forever to to do the paths, the actual rendering doesn't take that long to do. Now because 
I've got highlights hitting on this grill here, so light is coming from this direction, which means the front of the bonnet face here is going to be hitting light. Now, as it goes around the corner of the car, because there'll be a, a corner on the car here, and then down the side of the car into the wheel arch, this side isn't going to be in direct sunlight. The top of the wheel arch will be in direct sunlight. So, for this sake now, I'm going to press Command Shift and I whilst that's selected. And now that you'll notice you get an edge around here, that means you've inverted the path. Yeah. So, then on a new layer, I'm going to get bright white and I am literally got a few clicks and then what I'm also going to do I'm going to put that underneath the headlight I'm also going to use that path I used for the headlight and I'm going to use this path here select those and I'm going to press delete And then the rest I'm just going to erase manually. I'm going to erase all this side out because that's where it's rolling away. This is where your understanding of what, what light does to a 3D form is really important. You need to understand how light falls on an object and what your design intentions are and what that means to a surface <coughs> so all the, the, the sketch I, I kind of want this crease to lead into this edge here and there out by a couple of millimeters so I'm just going to ignore the sketch underneath I'm just going to move that a couple of mil and I'm also going to lift it above the black line so there's a bit of a thickness there so you, there's a hint that there's a, a rolled crease or an edge so I'm going to ignore the sketch on that there. Um, yeah, and I'm also going to soften that edge down there as well. Because it's a bit harsh in a minute. So I'm going to soft eraser. And now I've done that, I'm going to actually move it back down a bit. Just because I've erased quite a lot of that. Again, I'm doing this bloody three handed. Ugh. I miss my whack on. I'm gonna have to scale that out now. Because I've lost that edge, that's bad. I'm gonna use the M, I'm gonna press M, get the marquee tool. And I'm literally just gonna select that area. Now I'm going to press Command Shift and I to invert that. You see the change that's happened there. Now I'm going to press Delete because now when I press Command T, <coughs> press Command T now, and it only selects those pixels there on that layer. Just because I noticed earlier that there was something down here from when I had it on three tra when I had three transform on, it thought there was something down there. So I thought there must be some pixels down there. I've got white on it or something. Uh, <coughs> okay, I've got to do a new layer again. It's a repetitive process, this is. And I'm going to do this vent. I'm going to press X to switch my color to black. Get a brush. And then what I'm going to do as well. Actually, no, I'll ignore me. I'm going to select this path now and I'm going to invert that. Now, on a layer above or below, it doesn't really make any. Actually, I'll do it below. You'll see why in a second. I'm going to get a white. And I'm just going to. Add some highlight to the bottom edge of that air vent. And I'm gonna actually I'm just gonna marquee again, marquee tool, delete, get rid. Soft eraser. Uh, 
and because this surface around the wheel arch rolls down and then it goes back in on itself it's a negative surface so it's going away and it's going into shadow so that's why that's not going to be a highlight so it's erase that white that's there and then because there's a bit of 3D form going on I'm just going to delete all that I don't want all that I might, even, might as well marquee that And then that has quite quickly given me a highlight down there. Now again, same as I did up there. I'm going to move that up a little bit. Just because when I do the next layer, and I use that same path. I'll zoom back out again. I'm going to go back to my black. I'm just going to fake that out with the eraser. Now what I'm going to do as well, I'm going to do a new path, which is going to define the lip that goes around this vent. Um, which I'm assuming is going to be something like this. Again, we're back to pathing again. I want to go to the direct selection tool. Basically, what I'm doing here is I'm adding thickness to the lip of what surrounds this air vent, a bit of form, a bit of sculpture, and this kind of follows the crease of the actual wheel arch, kind of. So with that in mind, save that path, do a new layer, and then select that top. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit of black in there first. <coughs> That's just a bit of contrast in the surface. It shows there's a change in the surface. Um, but crucially, where that's in the, the layer list makes a difference and I'm going to turn that down a bit so it's a bit more subtle than that and then I'm going to do a new layer again I'm going to use that same path and zoom in I'm just going to add some shadow to this top side one of these parts to this one 
and I'm going to do the side part of the side of the car and on that layer I'm going to do a white and just make sure that's underneath the windows As I said earlier, I want this to kind of fade out, so I'm just going to soft erase all that. Really subtle, but you can see it's there, which is the intention. Then I'm going to do a highlight on the bonnet as well. But I've got a path in here. And for the purpose of doing some contrast, I'm going to do that black. Just knock the edges off. So it's almost like a power bulge. And then underneath that layer, I'm going to do a new layer. And I'm going to get white, a slight smaller brush. And because I've soft erased that, I've taken all the edge out of it. And then what I'm going to do, go around here. And then I'm just going to follow the center line of the car almost. And then let's go all the way down. Save that path, and then what I'm going to do is deselect for now, go back to that white layer, and I'm just going to oh, Invert that, press delete, and then I'm also going to just erase three M with an airbrush both sides of that line. Um, but I'm just going to get rid of all that there. <coughs> and then I'm going to do that layer again I'm just going to turn that down a bit 
So I've done that own combination of two layers now. And I'm going to go to this layer. No, not layer, path. Or a new layer. So I invert the path. I'm just going to add some contrast in here. And I'm going to go to the wheel arch. Select that, delete. And then I'm going to just erase that manually. And then you'll notice I did this path down here. Press that. Photoshop is having a fit. Let's go and raise that. Soft links one out. Raise that behind that wheel arch. I'm going to go back to the wheels. I'm just going to add a little bit more black. Uh, invert that first. Then I'm going to select this path and this path. And I'm just going to delete. And then I'm just going to softly erase that. So I'm gonna add um that's changed now actually. Add a nice bit of white. Oops. That's gonna go. I want the headlights and that layer. So that's seven and eight. I want those to be on the top. <coughs> then I'm gonna go back to my paths. And then I'll select that one again and delete that part in the middle. And then I'm just going to turn the white down so it's more of a grey. And then I'm going to erase this bit here to soften that out because that's got a harsh line that I want. So you generally get the idea. You see it starting to come alive. I don't know what else can I add in there. Uh, gonna add some kind of a highlight that bends to around here and then just kind of fades out to down here somewhere I'm going to use Add 
amount of point here. Just tweak that so that there is an edge to all of this. And this is basically I'm just going to do a highlight running through the surface. So with the white, really softly add that, and there is the top section of it. And then I'm going to use the same path and go on the path selection and hold Alt or drag that to duplicate it. And I'm going to stretch it out this way. I'm going to perspectives. It's just a quick way of skewing the path. And then on that slot path, I'll go back to the layer. And then I'm literally just going to soft the rays. I'm not going to completely delete, but I'm just going to soft the rays. And it just gives you a reflection. And then I'll scale that down. Or actually, I'll just move it down for the rim. I'm going to get a smaller brush. Brush size is going to be about there. So that's okay, 10. We'll try 10, see how it goes. Oh, now on top of everything, uh, create a new layer, go to your paths, press B so you're on your actual brush tool, and then stroke that path. And then what I'm going to do, just to raise the bottom. Uh, erase the top of it, knock the colour out of it, and then then I'm just going to get freehand and put a bit of a highlight in here. Uh, slightly small brush, maybe. Uh, same on this side. So it gives you an indication of the, the wheel. And then I'm also going to duplicate this. And this is going to give you an indication of the tile wall. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to notice that. Right, invert that. I'm going to get a white brush again on a new layer. And then I'm going to go back to the wheel, get the wheel arch, invert that, delete, oh, no. that's the wrong one, wrong path, that path that I want, invert that, delete the stuff that I don't want, and then I'm just going to freehand arrays. And then I'm just going to knock that down a bit and move it slightly as well. And it just gives an indication there is a tire in there, it's light catching the top of the tire wall. See some of the, the layers have gone a bit wild at the bottom there. Let's find out what layer that is. I'm 
I'm just going to use the marquee tool just to delete that. Then I'm just trying to think what I can do. I'm going to add a highlight in here to show going from this edge here toward the headlight. Now I'm just going to erase softly first then a lot larger and then I'm going to take one of those paths that I did earlier actually it was that one I'm also going to nudge that up do a little bit more and I'm going to Knock that underneath the headlight. I'm moving the actual headlight. Form going on in there, and I haven't quite worked out what I'm going to do with the side here. Oh, there should be a bit of shadow in there down here somewhere. Invert those three, so I'm going to call it in between the three of those. I'm just going to get a black. I'm going to get a razor, just a raise part of that. Uh, I don't have to worry about it too much because what I'm going to do, I'm going to move that quite far down here. Then go back to one of these paths, go back to that one. I should delete that. <coughs> and then I'll just softly erase that. Oh, that's too much. Oh, I'll do. I'm not that such more grey. Then the layer that has this area on, I'll just change that because it's got quite a harsh line to it. Let's just find that. I mean, it all depends on the design you're trying to do, but that is. Typical is going to be the last layer of fine. Oh, it's the black that's doing that. Highlight on the windscreen as well, just to give it a real glass like sort of feeling. The same process as usual.
right at the very top. New layer. Um, a white. I'm just going to raise. Then I'm going to add where the A pillar goes. into the glass I'll leave that up going over there actually because I'll use the original window to do to sort the rest out of that. So on a new layer again, I'm going to get black, jet black that right there, and then I'll go back to this one and. Got to invert that. Press delete. Then find out what layer has got this harsh line on. One of the black ones, I believe. So it's going to be this one. It's a combination of all of them. Call it a, a wrap there. Um, actually, that's something to a highlight. No, it's bad. Uh, we'll do one more let right on the top. And I'll do that in a blue, do a nice ice blue or something. And then what I'll do, I'll make that mm, colour burn looks quite nice. Dark colour linear burn. Lighten, nah. Screen, mm, yeah. Could have dodge. Nah, that's too too harsh. So that might look all right once it's below all the black stuff. So I the windows. So if I was to drag that down to there. Maybe another one, another one. And you can see how just the position on the layers alone can make a difference. So by putting the black above the colour can make a difference. And then you could even just tone down the colour. And 
could double click that going to the layer styles. I could even do a gradient overlay. I'll set that to some kind of wild color, maybe. Just for just for kicks, really, just to see what it looks like. This is literally just messing around, really. There's an overlay. Maybe not. Color dodge. Nip. Multiply. Yeah, interesting. Radial. Nah. And then again. Nah, definitely not. Angle. Nope. Maybe. Let's change this to maybe two two tones of blue. Maybe actually the the orange. Uh, linear, but on the angle. An overlay. Uh, pin light. Dodge. I quite like the look of that. Anyway, um, where's my tile wall? <coughs> so I've got all the the tires, all this tire area to be on top because otherwise it kind of ruins. But actually what I'll do, which is quicker, I'll select that path the wheel arch, go on the new layer, then I'll do a layer mask. But I'll invert that. Yeah, and then you, you can see where this is going. You just keep working into it, really, and decide. What, I'm, I have no idea what I want to do down the side of here. Um, could be absolutely anything. What I will do for the purpose of this, I'm just going to freehand. Oops. That's not even white. I was hoping to free add but I can't do it with the mouse. So <laughs> what I'm gonna do is just path in some form of wind mirror. Soft. Then blow that. It's going to cast a shadow on the body side. And the shadow is going in that direction. So I'm just going to pull this 
all that way. Add a little bit of curve. Then run it off. New layer. Black. Yeah. I'll show you. Um, the shoot line as well. What I mean. Okay, so I've kind of made what I want to do with that actually with that line. I'm gonna get a really small brush five on a new layer. Stroke that. I'm just gonna take the edges off. Hold down, press down V, hold down Alt, drag, then press Command I. And there's your shut line. I'm gonna put the white underneath the black. I'm just going to pull it in so it's a bit smaller. I zoom back out. And now what I'm gonna do is So I'm just gonna do a nice big Then the same process again on the bottom. What then? What should I do? Highlight. Just fade 
like that X bit as well. Just show there's a bit of form in the side, really. Um, then you just keep on going, really. I'm not going to leave it at that because I'm getting sick to death using Photoshop with the mouse. But um, yeah, hope that helps. Uh, any questions, drop us a comment. <coughs> any requests for further tutorials, drop us a comment. And uh, yeah, cheers.